What it is, what it was, what it could be, y'all. Welcome back to Disc Golf Justice. I figure since I'm approaching on my two year anniversary of playing disc golf, I think June will be two years for me, I'd go over what discs I'm bagging for the 2024 season. If you guys have been watching my content, you'll know I'm definitely a cart guy. I'm not a bad guy. I hate carrying a disc golf bag, but I'm gonna be moving back to America very soon, so I had to get rid of my cart, unfortunately, but I'm rocking the Berg's bag. Shout out to Berg's Disc Sports. The V3, I believe, holds way more discs than I need, but that's why I kind of fill it up. I don't honestly need as many discs I got. I think I got, I don't know, 23 or so, 22. But I honestly don't even need that many. I put that many in there just because of the bag holds that many. And if you don't fill it up, everything's kind of flopping around. Starting with just like some fun discs that I use. I do bag a, well, not even fun. I do use the Berg actually quite a bit. I bag a Berg and a Glitch. Now I use the Berg for exactly what you think. An upshot where I'm a little scared of it going a bit long. I'm sure you are just like me. Have a little bit of struggles with your distance control unless you're palming Beth or whoever watching Disc Golf Justice channel. Shout out to you, Paul. But I also bagged the Glitch, and now I haven't had the balls to throw this in a tournament or in an actual round yet. I mostly use it for playing catch with my wife, but I don't know. I'm getting pretty dialed with it, so I can see myself doing it in a tournament. But yeah, I use the Berg on upshots when I'm afraid of running it, and the, and the Glitch just for playing catch. Now, talking about my putting putters, I recently, very recently, just switched. I was I was putting with the Prodigy PA3s in the 350G plastic, or no, the 300 plastic, I think. But uh, I, I moved out to an area where my wife's family is and there's no disc golf course around. So I've just been throwing at trees, essentially. And I didn't want to beat up my putting putters putting at trees. So I jokingly use a disc that you'll see here in a second, which was a disc craft Luna in my jawbreaker. I use it as my understable slot. So I was using it since it's already flippy as my putting putter. Well, it turns out I kind of like the beadless. As soon as I went back to grab my PA3s, I was like, oh, I don't think I like that. So I got a couple Discraft Lunas in the Jawbreaker plastic. These don't feel quite the same as the other Jawbreaker. It's quite a bit older. I think I got, it was one of the first discs I ever ordered, but these ones, they feel a lot more stiff. I'd say maybe a little bit less grippy to be honest, but I, I haven't had really any issues with them. I haven't even putted these at an actual basket yet, just only at trees, but they've been feeling really good, feeling really good for me. So Discraft Lunas for my putting putters. Moving on to my putt and approach disc. Like I already said, I bagged the Discraft Luna as my understable slot for my throwing putter. I've had this, this was the first disc I ever ordered. I ordered a Buzz, a Luna, and a Hades, all the Paul Macbeth, just like you did. And this thing, I thought it was too flippy and never really used it, but then recently I made a comeback in my bag because, yeah, I just like it as an understable slot. It's got it, because it is a Luna, it's still got a little bit of stability on it where if you throw it up with a bit of nose up and it turns over, it might fight out a little bit. It's not gonna turn into a roller unless you put a lot on it. For my straight putter slot, I bag the MVP Envy, specifically the Eagle McMahon. I just could, I already bagged the Envy. I, I bagged the Glow one before, but look at the stamp, man. Golly, I couldn't help myself. I had to change the Envy. I do find this one probably a little bit less stable than my Glow Envy, which I, I don't really like. I did like the Glow Envy stability, but it's not like it's flippy now. It's still an Envy, it's still stable. It's just slightly less than the Glow stable. But man, look at this stamp. You, if you don't at least have this to put it on the shelf. You may not need to bag it, but that is a beautiful, beautiful stamp. For my, I guess, approach spots, I bagged two of them, Discraft Zones. Now this one is then the recycled ESP plastic. Shout out to Discraft, they sent this to me and I it flies just like a normal ESP uh, zone to me. Like honestly, I, I feel no difference. It does feel maybe a little bit less uh, grip on it, but other than that, it feels like a, an ESP zone to me. And it's been my, Upshot disc for when I, if I want some skippage, and I also find it a little bit less stable than the Get Freaky, which is the next one. So this is my most overstable approach disc. And then this one is still stable, still a zone, but it's a little bit less torque resistant on the forehand and a little bit less stable than the Get Freaky. But yeah, if I want to skip, throw the ESP. If I want it to sit, I throw the Get Freaky. I have OCD and everything has to go in a specific order in my bag. I don't know if you're like that. But moving on to my mid ranges, you'll see a common theme in my bag is groups of four. Everything's in four, There's, I think one set of three. But uh, my mid ranges, understable slot, RPM Piwaka Waka. This thing's flipped. It's 180 grams, so it's a little bit more stable than your typical Piwaka Waka, but this thing's flippy. This is 401. I need something that I, I know is gonna turn over. It, I can't get it to go super far because it is that flippy unless I really take off on it, like take off a lot of power, put it on a bunch of hyzer and let it hyzer flip up, turn, and then it might fade a little bit. But you do gotta take off quite a bit of power. It's an easy turnover disc. For my neutral, and I mean neutral, this is probably the most neutral 
mid-range or probably disc on the market, the Trash Panda Dune. This thing is just laser straight. It's straight. If you put it on a bit of hyzer, it's going to hold the hyzer. If you put it straight, it's going to go. I don't even, it's not going to fade, bro. It's not going to fade on of it. You might be thinking, oh, I hit my line. It just needs to crash just a little bit. No, it's not going. It's going to go dead straight. But if you do put it on anhyzer, it, it'll hold that as well. So I find this the most neutral disc I've ever thrown. And it can be a blessing and a curse because if you miss your line, it, you know how hyzer is a little bit more forgivable or overstability is a bit more forgivable. Moving on to my more overstable mid-range, the MVP Pyro. This one is in the Prism pl Plasma Plastic. Love this disc. I, at first, I didn't like it. My wife got this for Christmas, I think, last year or the year before. And I didn't like the disc because I found it a bit slippery, but it's lately come back into my arsenal and I honestly really, really I think it was because of Simon. Simon talked it up a lot and I was like, oh, maybe I should give it a second chance. So I did give it a second chance and it turns out I really, really do like this disc. It's, it's stable, it's stable. And then if you want to talk about stable, we getting even more stable for the dynamic disc justice. I have to bag it. I have to, I mean, I have to. You, you know what the justice is. It's ridiculous to say, but impressively enough, I do use this quite a bit because sometimes you need something. If you're throwing a forehand, I don't have the best forehand form and I can get some flutters on that. If I want to make sure it's going to fade or I need it to fade hard or I need something to skip a lot and fade, that's when this comes out. Same thing on backhand. Like It's just very, very stable, very predictable. Hello, Doobie. Hello. Okay. On to my seven speed fairways again, four of them. This one is more just a utility disc. It is crazy understable. The, uh, what's this? The Westside Disc Underworld. This was another early purchase of mine and it got taken out of the bag <laughs> pretty soon because of how flippy it is. But then, a long time ago, it actually got worked back into the bag because it's so flippy. I'm not the best at throwing Anheuser shots and throwing rollers. This disc is going to roll for you. I, I usually put it on hyzer, hyzer flip it up and over into a roller, as well as my forehands. It, work, it comes in really handy if you got a low ceiling and you can't, you're afraid that you're going to throw nose up into the trees or, or whatever, forehand into the trees. You can just throw this flat and it's gonna freaking roll and you'll still get some good distance. You can still get 400 feet out of this. It's not gonna go too much more because it's gonna, it's so flippy that it rolls up out of the roller, but it's an easy, easy disc to roll. For my kind of understable, so it's not crazy understable, but it's pretty understable. I'd say a hyzer flippish or a flat to turn over fairway is my Dismania FD S-Line plastic. I just really like this disc. It feels confident in my hand. I like the color in particular. It's like a beautiful baby blue color and it's pretty predictable. I like throwing it flat for turnover shots. I don't have a lot of faith in it on the forehand just because I'm not a very good forehander but I do like it for tunnel shots as well for a little bit of a hyzer flip but it's got it's still an FD. It's got a little bit of stability at the end but that, the S-line plastic does make it slightly flippy. For my straight and it's gonna have some fade on it. Like I can put this on Anheuser and it'll fade. We're talking about the MVP Crave and this is in the Neutron Plastic. And possibly, other than that Envy, this might be the second most beautiful disc in my bag. Like pink rim, baby blue. If you haven't noticed a common theme, I love pink, blue, and purple discs. So all my discs are those colors. Uh, yeah, this disc, if I throw it flat, it'll turn a some and then it'll fade some. From where you released it, it's gonna go dead straight essentially. It might turn and fade or whatever, but it's gonna go pretty dead straight. And then for my overstable seven speed, that 7502 slot, I got given this by my nephew. Shout out to Zach, the Lone Star Disc Mad Cat. I, I was skeptical at first because I'd never thrown any Lone Star Disc, never tried them out. He dyed it up for me. If you don't know, I'm from Nebraska, so he dyed it up with a Husker stamp on there. And I was skeptical at first, but I took it out to the field. Turns out it's actually freaking money. It's perfect for me for hands. It's really torque resistant. I can throw it as like a hyzer flip uh, forehand or on backhand, it's, it's very stable. I throw it flat, it's gonna fade hard. I throw it on Anheuser, it's gonna fight out of it. You can throw it low, skip it. Like it's it's very workable workhorse disc on an, on an open course. Don't really use it a lot on wooded courses unless you're trying to get something skippy. But yeah, I do use this disc a lot and I really like it. I love the, the hand feel of it. Like I used to bag in this slot the FD1, this mini FD1, but I found it's a really, a really aggressive in the hand, that disc, and it just doesn't feel comfortable. This Wildcat, Lone Star Wildcat, it's the only Lone Star 
hard disk I bag, but it feels really, really good in the hand. I don't know what plastic this is, uh, Alpha. I don't know nothing about that, but I do really like this disc. But moving on to my nine speed fairways, my understable-ish is honestly more just straight. I uh, really, really, really love this disc, Discraft Undertaker. I, this is the Six Claw Macbeth one. And I found that, that the Six Claw, and compared to the, the old one I used to have, I just had a, a, a regular ESP one. This one's got a lot more dome to it. So you can get some really good distance out of this Undertaker and it's still quite, it's not stable. You know what I mean? Like if you throw it on Anheuser, it's likely not gonna come back. But if you throw it flat, it'll turn and fade. And if you throw it on Heiser, it'll probably pop up to flat and then fade. Like I, this is a workhorse disc for me. I use this a lot and it's been a disc that stayed in my bag essentially the whole time I've had it. Not this one in particular, obviously this is a six claw, but this disc is a workhorse for me. For, if there's a bit of headwind and I'm a bit too afraid to throw that underclaw or the undertaker, that's when the dynamic disc fell in and the fusion plastic comes in. Like this isn't, it's a felon, but it's not as stable as like you'd want your nine speed overstable, you know, Firebird, Raptor, slot to be it's like if i if there's a headwind i can throw this on hyzer and pop it up to flat and even if there is no headwind i if i get on it i can definitely pop it up to flat and if i throw it flat it's going to turn and stuff so it's not as stable as you would think this is my straight disc for when it's windy i don't trust this a lot on forehands because i find it not as torque resistant as as other discs i again i have terrible forehand form but if i throw this on hyzer a lot of times it'll pop up to flat and if i get a lot of flutters it actually will turn over on me but that, that's honestly on me i like it it's grippy that fusion plastic stink eye pink eye yeah I like this disc. Moving on from my overstable slot, the Captain's Raptor 2024, Paul Ulibarri, Z Flex, Captain's Raptor. This thing is stable, y'all. Not like unusable stable, but it's it's like what you would want out of this slot. Something that I don't care what headwind's coming, it's gonna fade. You're not gonna make this thing turn over. I don't care how, to an extent how bad your forehand is, you're not gonna turn this thing over. It's gonna hold your ties or at worst case scenario, you might pop it up to flat, but that would have to be a really, really bad throw. A really, really bad form. Yeah, this disc is money. I like it because it's it's that Z Flex, so it's bendy, gets good distance, can still skip, but also if you throw on like spike, it'll absorb a lot of the impact so you can get it to sit. And if you hit trees, I feel like it's gonna hold up a lot better than, even though I love ESP plastic, ESP is probably my favorite plastic of all time in terms, cause it's just grippy and it's durable. And there's a, not a lot of plastics that I've tested that are both grippy and durable and hold their stability for a long periods of time. But I, that's what I like about the Z Flex is it can hit stuff and it's gonna keep that stability. It has hit stuff and it's kept its stability since day one. So this has become a major workhorse and I, and I really love it. It. Last but not least, the big guns, my distance drivers are mostly 11 and 12 speeds here. They all are 11 and 12 speeds here. I have six of them and compared to like my four and everything else, I do have six of these. And that's mostly because I feel like if you're throwing distance driver, they're the most touchy of anything. They have the most variables of the Scooby-Go. Um, so I feel like you should have more different stability slots in there for something that can, a lot can go wrong. You know what I mean? Anyways, I hope y'all get what I'm saying. Start with my understable slot. This is new to the bag. It just kicked out a disc that's also from the same manufacturer. And we have the Discraft Thrasher in recycled plastic. Really, really love this disc ever since I got it. The one thing I hated about my Hades was the disc that this kicked out. It was a bit unpredictable. Like it's a flippy disc, but sometimes it would flip and turn over and cut roll. And then other times I'd be like, all right, this should definitely turn over. And then it doesn't do a turnover, it ends up fading out, and it just ended up being a really frustrating disc for me a lot of times. And then another disc that was like that that used to be in the bag was the Clash Disc Wild Honey. I just, me and those two discs, they're too touchy on my arm speed, at least the versions that I had. If I wanted them to turn over, they ended up fading a little bit, and if I wanted them to fade a little bit, they'd always turn over. So what I like, really like about this uh, Discraft Thrasher is it's gonna turn over. If I throw this on hyzer, it's gonna pop up to flat and it's gonna turn over. But it does have a little bit of stability at the end that it's not just gonna cut roll unless yeah, I can definitely turn this into a roller, but it is gonna fade a little bit at the end, and that's what I really, really like about it. Next slot, I actually bagged two of the same discs and different weights, and might surprise you, the stability is. We got the MVP Photon in the Fission Plastic. I really love the MVP Fission. It's probably my second favorite plastic behind ESP. Really grippy, really stable, and really durable. That's what I really want in my plastics. And I bagged two of them. One of them is like, I don't know the exact weights on them. I put an H on there for the heavy one and an L on the other one for the light one since it's the same exact color. But it turns out my heavy one is actually my 
more understable one is my 163 one my lightest weight one is my more straight point and shoot if i put it flat it might turn over depending on the wind but it should turn and then come back i i, I have more of a hyzer release myself so i like to put things on hyzer and this will pop up to flat it might turn a smidge but and then it should fade at the end so those are my these two the the, the photons these are my workhorses right here then when i need something that i think can handle my forehand better or on the backhand i need if there's more of a headwind i want it to for sure fade that's when i bring out the Discraft Force ESP Recycle Plastic. Like I said before, the, this, this ESP Recycle Plastic is just like regular ESP. I haven't noticed any differences. I actually haven't ever thrown a normal force before, but uh, so I guess take that with a grain of salt. This thing's still stable, still stable. And I even took a ch chip out of it hitting a tree one time and it's still stable. Um, if I throw this flat, depending on the wind, you might get some turn out of it, but it's definitely gonna fade as well. And then it can handle my weak, <laughs> floppy forehand. And then if I need something with a more stability than that, it's not too much more stable, but it is more stable and has pop top dome, which is a first from MVP. And that is the Simon Lime line time lapse from MVP Axiom Disc, whichever it is, Neutron Plastic. I can't wait until they come out with this in a Fission Plastic. That'll be really good because I hate Neutron Plastic. It's really slippery to me, especially on forehands. If your hands get sweaty and stuff, yeah, I just, I've never really agreed with Neutron Plastic, but this thing has got some serious pop top to it and, in, and it's also pretty stable. So I can throw this flat or I can even try to flex it and trust that it's gonna fade and it can also handle my forehand. And then, Best disc in the game, baby. You know what it is. If you need something that's going to fade, you need something that's going to give you that, ah, that fade, baby. RPM Katori. Best disc in the game. This thing is stable. 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 If you got a bad forehand, Katori. If you need something to make this mando left as go a 90 degree angle, Katori. You need something to skip off the ground, Katori. I don't know honestly how to pronounce it, Katori, Katori. Whatever, man. This thing is money. It's a staple in the bag. Probably comes out at least once around. around. Like it's not something I'm, it's not a workhorse, you know what I mean? But golly, I don't know what I would, this thing has gotten me out of some serious predicaments and just helped me with my forehand as well. My forehand is getting better, folks. My forehand is getting a lot better, but it's still not that good. <laughs> so this disc has helped me a lot, but that's gonna wrap it up. That's all, what's, let me count them up for you real quick. That is all 25 discs that I bag. And to be honest, I don't need all of them. Like I said, I got a glitch in here that I'm counting. So 25 discs, including my two putting putters, I'll take it, I'll take it. And uh, I finally feel like I've got my bag dialed. To me, that's like one of the best parts of disc golf is, you know, testing out new discs and, and figuring out what to bag, what you like and what you don't like. Other than playing new courses, that's the best part of disc golf. And when you finally, feel like you've got it on lock. I know we all always think we got it on lock and then another disc comes out and we try it or whatever and the process never ends. But I finally feel very happy and confident in every single disc in my bag. I can pick up any one of these discs and I know what it's gonna do given any headwind circumstance, or at least I know what it should do, not what it's gonna do. That's so Raven over here, but yeah, I feel freaking dialed, man. I feel dialed and it feels good. So that's the 2024 season bag. I already got a W with it. Some of these discs are even new since then, but 2024 ACT Sizzler champion, MA1, let's go. That's gonna wrap up the video, y'all. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. If you wanna see more, make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future content. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.